Welcome back to another reaction and ting and ting and ting. I'm Mr. Giant and uh, we're going to go back into the geography now vibe. You know what I mean? So we're doing geography now Japan. And uh, hey, have you guys noticed that I'm working on the lighting, you know, make it more aesthetically pleasing to your eyes. You know what I mean? I, I got to, uh, another light here and, you know, I'm learning as I go, you know, and I'm having fun doing that. I'm having fun doing that and thing. You know what I mean? Got these uh, Mr. Giant t-shirts here. I'm going to put the card up there if you're interested in getting one. Hey, go ahead and do it. You know what I mean and thing, but I ain't going to babble on too much. Let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what go on here with Japan. Hey, my man is on the vibe again. This is one country I barely have to introduce you to. Let's just get it over with. Sushi, geishas, karate, temples, ramen, anime, sumo's weird stuff, weird cosplay, poison fish, and I'm not even going to ask about that. Dewa, ikamashou! Dewa, ikamashou! It's time to learn geography now! Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. We have reached the land of the Barbs rising on the sun, scene, all yeah. island powerhouse, and home to a culture that I'm sure you've heard of. Let's just jump into it. Ah, Japan, you have such a story behind you. First of all, Japan is located right off the east coast of the Asian continent between the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Japan, stretching all the way from the Sea of Okhotsk in the north with the East China Sea to the south. The country is divided into 47 prefectures, each with incredibly beautifully minimalistic style flags. The prefectures are divided into four different categories, Ken, To, Fu, and Do. The first level, Ken, <laughs> Ken, refers to the 43 plain prefectures. Then you have To, which means something like metropolis, and this category only applies to Tokyo City. Fu refers to the urban prefectures, which applies only to the cities of Osaka and Kyoto. And finally, Do, which is a unique category translating to something like circuit, and it applies to all of Hokkaido in the north. Speaking of which, Tokyo, Japan's capital, is the largest city in the world with its greater metropolitan area, including Kanto, containing about 37 million people. That's more than the entire population of Canada. However, Tokyo is kind of like 23 smaller cities all smashed into one, divided into units called wards. And the closest thing to a capital one would probably be Chiyoda, where the Emperor, Prime Minister, and Supreme Court are located. After the greater Tokyo Kanto region, you have the next largest cities, Osaka and Nagoya, coming in at third. Keep in mind, about 90% of people in Japan live in cities, and the vast majority on Honshu and Kyushu. The busiest airports, of course, being Tokyo's two twins, Haneda, which is actually in Tokyo, and Narita International, which is like an hour and a half drive away outside of Tokyo. Then you have Osaka's Kansai International, <laughs> Kicks. and Fukuoka International on Kyushu. <laughs> Uh, gotta keep it clean, Keith. Speaking of which, Japan is made up of about 6,850 islands, but about 97% of the land is made up of four main islands, Honshu, Kyushu, Shikoku, and Hokkaido. South of the main four, you have the Ryukyu Island chain, which extends just south of Kyushu, partially making up the Okinawa Prefecture. You've probably heard of Okinawa. It's where Uma Thurman got that sword that she used to kill Lucy Liu. It's also where these two islands... <clears throat> never mind. Nonetheless, Japan can still kind of be separated into ten historical main regions, six of which divided amongst Honshu. Then you have the interesting, less highlighted Kuro Island, Island dispute with Russia in the north. Basically, Russia administers all of them, but Japan claims these two islands closest to Hokkaido, Ituruk or Etorofuto, and Kunashir or Kunashiri, which is only like less than 10 miles away from Hokkaido. On a clear day, you can even see it from the coast, but it's like, nope, Russia. They even have a statue of Lenin. The Russians and Japanese have kind of had a long dispute over this area. At one point, Japan even tried to take over all of Sakhalin in the 1800s. Then you have the Dokto Takashima Island dispute between them and South Korea. To this day, South Korea has a patrol building built on the island and they fiercely guard it. And finally, you have Okino Torishima, which is probably the loneliest place in Japan, as a shallow reef in the middle of the ocean. It looks like it's trying so hard to become an island, complete with three helipads and a research station. There's no diplomatic dispute, but rather a dispute within the UN on whether or not it qualifies as land for an exclusive economic zone in the ocean. Phew! Okay, alright, that kind of took forever. Getting around to Japan is incredibly easy, often touted as having the best public transportation system in the world. They have highways and trains everywhere, even one that cuts through an office building, as well as the Shinkansen bullet train system that can get you to virtually every corner of Honshu and Kyushu, as well as the bottom tip of Hokkaido, but not Shikoku. If you want to go to Shikoku, you have to take the slower local Seto Ohashi line across the Seto Bridge. Yeah, Shikoku is kind of like the runt of the litter in Japan. Basically, Japan is like one big massive machine, constantly running and moving with flashing neon lights, vending machines, and robots, and everything. Everything! Even the garbage cans have cartoons. Cartoons everywhere. Anyway, some notable places of interest might include Tokyo Skytree, the second tallest building in the world, Miyajima Pagoda, Matsumoro Himeji and Osaka Castles, the Fushimi Inari Shrine, 
the Great Buddha Hall, Nakagin Capsule Tower, the Vine Bridges of Ia Valley, the Ramen Museum, so many weird themed restaurants and hot springs, the self mummified monks of Sokushin Butsu, that hotel run by robots, the Ninja Museum in Iga, Kan Manga Fuchi Lava Buddhas, the restricted access Ise Grand Shrine, the most significant of all Shinto shrines, the Shirakawa Go traditional village armed with water cannons to protect itself from fires, abandoned theme parks like Greenland and Nara Dreamland, Kuchiya Hill with Red Cypress, and the national treasure Itsukushima Shrine featured on numerous pieces of art, films, and even banknotes. Now despite the bustling metropolis regions and skyscrapers, Japan does an incredible job at maintaining its natural integrity. Find out how in... <laughs> I, I've always had an I've always been intrigued by the Japanese culture and all of that, uh, and it was also it was intensified when uh when I, I became friends with uh, this guy from Japan Yuta Usada Wagwan my brother take you know what I mean I'm gonna send you this because <laughs> I give you a shout out on the vibe here and thing and uh, we hung out a lot you know what I mean he came over to my apartment several times and we hung out and he used to tell me stories and stuff like that. Of course, it's an open invitation. I'm gonna take you up on that one day, Yuta. May I go come there and thing? You know what I mean? Check it out, you know. But uh, that culture, man, I really wanna delve into it and thing. And you know, it's it's like beautiful culture. You know what I mean? Uh, and the modernization of it and thing. I mean, a whole hotel run by robots. I'd like to see that. I'd like to see that and take, you know what I mean? Uh, that's the way the world is heading in, in that direction, I think. But they're so friendly. There's another uh, uh, Japanese guy that uh, that I met too. Akira was his name. Uh, oh, where oh, where did I meet these guys? Well, I used to do a radio show at the university up here. And uh, they were part of the journalism department up there, you know. So that's where I met them, you know what I mean? I haven't seen Utah in a long time, you know. But, you know, see him on Facebook ever so often, you know. Uh, liking some of my posts and all of that. But, uh, yeah really intrigued by that and it's beautiful there and they have all these like cool landmarks and stuff that i would like to see you understand what i say let's keep going here now Japan's land is kind of like a gingerbread house. Beautiful on the outside, but potentially dangerous on the inside. First of all, Japan is a stratovolcanic archipelago located right on the most precariously situated section where four major tectonic plates converge, the Pacific, the Philippine, the Eurasian, and the North American plates. Of course, this means that not only is Japan subject to earthquakes, but also tsunamis, which by the way is a Japanese word, tsunami, caused from sub-oceanic activities such as the one recently in Fukushima caused by the epicenter in the Japan Trench off the Pacific. This also means that Japan is a volcanic area with numerous volcanoes still active like Aogashima, a volcano within a volcano. Mount Aso, the largest volcanic caldera. This in return also blesses Japan with countless natural hot springs, which they like to exploit and build bathhouses on, called onsen, typically indicated with this symbol. All this plate activity in volcanoes means that about 70% of Japan is mountainous, with the highest peak, Mount Fuji, overlooking Tokyo, which by the way is still technically an active volcano, which erupted about 300 years ago. The rift between the Philippine plate and the Eurasian plate creates the Japanese Alps, which bisects the country on Honshu. This isolated geologic war zone in return, though, kind of blesses Japan with an abundance of unique flora and fauna. Today, about 70% of Japan is forested with nice natural water sources like the longest river, the Shinano, and the largest lake, Lake Biwa on Honshu. Endemic animals can be found like Japanese hornets, makake monkeys, tanukis, giant salamanders, bobtail cat, saro, red fox, red crown crane, the national dog, the shiba inu, the national bird, the green pheasant, and the national fish, koi. Speaking of animals, Japan has quite a few feral animal islands and towns such as Tashirojima, the cat island, Okuroshima, the rabbit island, the town of Miyajima for deer, Miyagi Zao for foxes, and of course Jigoku Dani where you can see those monkeys in hot springs with limited space and only about 20% highly subsidized. See all that stuff to check out. You know what I mean? Think outside the box. So they said, hey, why not go to the sea? Today Japan is disputably the most advanced aquaculture society on the planet. Not only do they have the largest merchant marine fleet in the world, but they also harvest everything from shellfish to seaweed in offshore ocean plots and fish farms. They love fish. They even have the largest fish market in the world, Tsukichi. Speaking of which, we all I love, love fish. Food. I feel like I don't even really have to give you a list of notable dishes like I'm gonna cook some fish here in a bit. However, Japan is known for making strange flavors of conventional snacks, drinks, and desserts, such as yogurt Pepsi, spaghetti popsicles, horse and octopus ice cream, pancake juice, wasp crackers, and Kit Kat has tried pretty much anything under the sun. Speaking of which, Japan is I'll try them all. economy by nominal GDP, mostly due to their various technology and automotive industries that have swept over the world by storm since the middle of the 20th century. The largest automotive companies include Toyota, Mitsubishi, Honda, Nissan. 
Nissan, Mazda, Suzuki, and Subaru, as well as tech companies and their subsidiaries like Hitachi, Sony, Epson, Canon, Toshiba, Fujitsu, Panasonic, Nikon, and Nintendo. This does, however, cause a problem. Japan is classified as a high throwaway society in which lots of resources get unnecessarily used and tossed. Like, come on, Japan, I know you have aesthetic standards, but seriously, I don't need one apple in vacuum sealed plastic wrap. Nonetheless, Japan is often seen as one of, if not the world leader in robotics and tech science, receiving more Nobel Prizes in science than any other Asian country. And it's kind of impressive. I mean, with a high population and limited space, Japanese people know how to consolidate and innovate. Speaking of Japanese people... <laughs> Now, Japanese people are like, you never know what they're going to come up with next. You know it's probably going to be a little weird, but you're still going to be a little interested in it. First of all, the country has about 127 million people and is the 10th most populous country in the world. However, Mexico is getting really close to beating them. The country is incredibly homogenous, with over 98% of the populace identifying as ethnically Japanese, while the remainder is mostly made up of Koreans, Chinese, and very small Caucasian minorities of Americans and Europeans, and the indigenous Ryukyu and Ainu peoples. They use the Japanese yen as their currency. They I'd like to go visit those people. Ryukyu and Ainu. I knew. As mentioned, indigenous like ago, Japan has two main indigenous eth Every country's got uh, an indigenous group. They, and a lot of them are small, but uh, they're still there. Uh, on the islands, it's the Araks and the Caribs. Not a whole lot of them left there, you know what I mean? Uh, the population is pretty small. I think they're in Dominica, another island, which is a sister island of Grenada, which is in the Windward Islands. They have a small... Uh, population of indigenous people there. I'm, I'm actually going to look that up and then see if there's a, a video I could uh, react to so, you know, we, can, we all could learn more about them and all of that, you know. But, yeah, every country's got its indigenous people, don't they? And they're still there hanging on, you know, that's keeping their culture going, you know. And, and that's why I think we could live together and still maintain our culture, appreciate and respect our culture, but live alongside each other. Don't infringe, don't try to colonize, don't try to indoctrinate or have them assimilate. I mean, there's some assimilation that's going to go on, I mean, in order for people to survive, especially if the dominant uh, culture is the dominant culture, you know what I mean? In order to survive, you got to learn some things from them, but you can still keep your little culture going on the side, you know what I mean? And yeah, people seem to be so afraid that they're going to lose their culture and their traditions, you can still keep it going within. Because look at all these indigenous people around the world maintaining their culture within the culture that, uh, that colonized them or take them over. So it, it can be done, maybe not to a, a big extent, you know, and uh, maybe your kids might go off and become part of the other culture that's dominant over you, but still, if you instill in them that cultural value, it could still, it could still uh, be maintained, you know what I'm saying, and thing, let's keep watching this here. The groups, each with their own languages. You have the Ainu, which predominantly inhabit Hokkaido and some of the Kuril Islands administered by Russia. Known for their rustic, scruffy features, where men grew beards and women used to tattoo their lips and arms. Today, there are less than 30,000 left, but some estimate that there could be up to 200,000 if you include the other Ainu that have assimilated into the rest of Japan and are kind of faintly aware of their own culture. Otherwise, you have the Ryukyu people, or the Okinawans, which are kind of like the Hawaiians of Japan, known for their own distinct art and traditions and beliefs. Now, everybody in the world has had at least a little bit of exposure to some kind of Japanese culture, whether it be samurais, geishas, sumos, kabuki, shamisen music, kimonos, and excessively weird products and advertisements aimed at using non-conformity as a hook to engage viewers. But apart from all that flashy Japan stuff, let's look at the basics first. Japan, no surprise, speaks Japanese, which is actually not that hard to learn conversationally, but it's a nightmare when it comes to writing. The I Japanese could imagine. uses three alphabets, hiragana, katakana, and kanji. Technically four if you include romaji, but that's kind of like for lazy people. The first two, hiragana and katakana, are syllabaries made up of 46 corresponding base characters. Each. That means you have two ways to write each syllable, whereas kanji is basically the list of Chinese characters that they borrowed from China. Most students have to learn about two to three thousand of these. That means that Chinese people can kind of get by in Japan just by reading the signs, as most of the characters have identical meanings, just different pronunciations. It's kind of hard to explain, but the reason why they use three alphabets is because each one kind of plays a role for certain words and context. They don't use spaces in writing, so each alphabet kind of acts as like word dividers and katakana. Oh, that's interesting. Words. Well, why don't they just fix the problem by using spaces and discard the other two? 
two alphabets. Shut up! That's why! If you didn't grow up here and actually learn this stuff, you're either obsessed with Japan or criminally insane. Sorry, I'm boring the crap out of you guys with language stuff. Anyway, let's talk about history! Now, I'm sure many of you have seen that video by Bill Wirtz, whom I am totally not jealous of, considering that he racked up more views and subscribers in two videos than I have in all these years of working on this channel, but in the quickest way I can summarize it. Yayoi period, Kofun period, Yamato's Unite Japan, Asuka regime, Chinese culture comes in, Heian period, aristocrats take over, Kamakura period, aristocrats lose, Shogun time, province wars, Azuchi Momoyama period, things are stable, Meiji restoration, industrialization, World War One, Japan's economy sucks, coup d'etats and assassination attempts against the emperor, military rule, they try to make an empire and in World War II attack Pearl Harbor, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, afterwards treaty signed, military kind of dismantled, and post-war economic miracle, done! Japan definitely sticks out from every country on earth and it's partially because of their belief system. Japan is the only country in the world that practices Shintoism, which obviously enough oh. started in Japan. If you don't know anything about Shintoism, basically it's a very ritualistic belief system that reveres a multitude of kami, which translates to something along the lines of gods or spirits or essence. It's hard to explain, but basically a kami can be manifested in almost anything and everything. There are kami for harvest, kami for war, kami for good luck, and so on. Today, about 80% of Japanese people practice Shinto to some extent, whether it be going to temples or shrines and lighting incense and praying. However, most of them will not say that they identify as Shintoists, since there are no formal rituals to deem yourself a practitioner. Otherwise, about 35% might say that they identify as Buddhist, and a small 3% are Christians. Today, there are about 81,000 Shinto shrines and about 85,000 appointed Shinto priests all over the country. I don't have to look into Shinto. Is also important because it's claimed that the emperor is a direct descendant of Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun, which means the emperor has the highest authority in Shintoism. Though today, it's more seen as like a moral tradition and patriotic practice rather than believing that the emperor actually has divine status. Oh yeah, and Japan has an imperial family with Akihito holding the throne since 1989, and to this day, Japan is the only country with an emperor. Some people will say that Shintoism is partially the reason why Japan also has a vibrant, complex industry of cartoons and anime, many of which inspired from Shinto-driven legends and kami. They often rank as the top video game producing and playing country in the world. Everybody knows Mario, Sonic, and Pikachu. In a sense, Japanese people have always admittedly kind of been escapists, creating their own worlds, and it might be due to their long history of diplomatic isolation. In another sense, though, honor and diligence culture is of huge importance. Having a degree and respectable title is always flaunted. The problem, though, is that Japan has the largest aging population in the world, in which over 26% of the country is 65 or older. In contrast, only about 12.4% are 1 to 14 years old. So, so wow. have many theories as to why this is, but in addition to a high depression rate, there seems to be a lack of sexual interest amongst millennials, especially for men. They even have a word for it, so shoku danshi, or herbivores. On top of that, Japan has a very strict and conservative approach towards immigration and citizenship. So ultimately, a smaller generation has to lift the burden of taking care of a population almost 10 times their size. Any Japanese people are overworked, they even have a word for that, karoshi. Some wonder how the future will look like. Hey son, can you help me cross the street? Ooh, I would, but you never had a son, so I don't exist. Good luck. <laughs> now you can probably wow. understand why the Japanese are so into building robots. There's so much more we could talk about, like how Japan has a strong history in martial arts, folklore, and regional festivals, but this video is already getting long and I have to cut it down. Some notable people of Japanese descent might include people like Emperor Hirohito, Fukuzawa Yukichi, Honda Tatakatsu, Kukai, Maeda Toshie, Tokugawa Leyasu, Murasaki Shikibu, Saifo Takamori, Akira Kurosawa, Hayao Miyazaki, Soichiro Honda, Miyoshi Umeki, Hibari Misora, Riko Kikuchi, Osamu Danzai, Kei Nishikori, Ayumi Hamasaki, Takeshi Hitano, Masayoshi Son, Akira Toriyama, Sadako Ogata, Kaiho Koki, Masako Katsura, Ichiro Suzuki, Hane Mori, Ken Watanabe, Downtown Duo, Kisuke Honda, and Shinji Kagawa. Now due to their history, Japan has always kind of been like a lone wolf, but over time they learned how to open up. And let's find out how in the last segment, the... So Japan is a pretty big player on the world stage. As a member of the G20, G8, IMF, WHO, UN, EAS, Interpol, and like 400 other acronyms, they know diplomacy pretty well. They get along with Brazil, Peru, and the Philippines pretty well, as each country contains many Japanese communities. In addition, lots of people from these countries either visit or work in Japan. Peru even had a Japanese president. As mentioned in the they France did. episode, Japan kind of sees France as like the epitome of European exoticism. And after English... Fr the, the Japanese uh, president uh, apparently... Uh did some stuff in uh, Peru, I do believe, and uh, went back to Japan and couldn't be uh, taken care of by law. You know what I mean? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I've, I've read about that uh, somewhere. Correct me if I'm wrong. Get in the comment section. Say a little something, something. Correct a giant if need be.
French is one of the most highly desired languages to learn, although good luck considering how every French word kind of ends in a continent. The Pacific Island nations of Palau, Kiribati, and Marshall Islands still hold close ties, even though Japan kind of occupied them during the first half of the 20th century. Japanese people love visiting and provide business and revenue for these countries. Their biggest frenemies are South Korea and China. These three are like the Asian trifecta, dominating most of the business and affairs in the East. Despite Japan having invaded and occupying these two for decades, my own grandmother was actually raised in Japanese-occupied Korea, and to this day she still speaks fluent Japanese. They've mostly moved on, plus the whole North Korea thing kind of makes South Korea and Japan closer. The youth of today love piggybacking off of each other's cultures. Koreans and Japanese admit it, they can't get enough of Japanese anime and video games, whereas the Japanese are obsessed with K-pop, and you know, they kind of got kanji and Buddhism from China, so uh, there's that. In terms of their best friends, however, interestingly enough though, most of the Japanese people I've talked to have said the USA and Taiwan. Even though they don't officially recognize Taiwan as a sovereign state on paper, they totally act like they do and stand with them on pretty much any diplomatic measure. Taiwan was actually the longest lasting occupied area under Japanese rule during the empire years, and they have since then still kept close. Even though the pains of World War II will never be forgotten, it's funny because almost immediately after that, the US and Japan started skipping down the street hand in hand. The US kind of felt like a duty to make reparations since they were already communities of Japanese Americans, especially in Hawaii and California. My hometown, Los Angeles, has a little Tokyo. So they invested tons of money in Japan after the war, and in the 50s, Japan started booming in every industry. Culture cues were adopted on both sides. Donald's opened up in Tokyo, 7-Eleven opened up in the US. They love burgers and Chris Evans, and we have nerds living in their mom's basements re-watching every season of Naruto Shippuden with ill-fitting cosplay outfits. <laughs> in conclusion, the land of the rising sun has always kind of figured that the best way for them to open up to the world was to create their own worlds with wild imaginations driven by technology, yet still beautifully preserving the ancient, vibrant values of their ancestors. Oh, and by the way, this episode was brought to you by Bob Saget's Bear Shark to Coffee Shoes. Watashi wa kohito kutsuga hoshi. Let's super harassment sandwich. Stay tuned. Jordan is coming up next. All right. Well, man, that makes me want to go there even more. It's a nice mixture of modernization with the old or the traditional. You know what I mean? There's a, a pretty decent balance there because the traditional was sort of brought into the modern, you know, because the anime stem from uh, the, the, the traditional stuff, you know, the stories uh, based on the traditional stuff. And like you said, they created their own world and thing there, you know what I mean? Which makes everybody else, like people like me, want to go and check the vibe out, you know what I'm saying and thing? Yeah, I'll leave a link in the description for the video like I do for all videos on here. So go check it out. Geography now, they, they always have some good videos there to go watch. So, you know, go check out them. Go check them out to take, all right? In the meantime, you all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.